Hello, friends. Welcome back to Dentistry Unmasked. My name is David Rice. I'm the chief editor at Dentistry IQ, and I'm here as always with... Hey, everybody. Pam Maragliano, Munich, chief editor for Dental Economics Magazine. David, it's really interesting because I feel like this year is my 20-year reunion from my dental school. And I feel like with my assistant that's younger and my team that's younger and just different things that turn up, I feel like I'm starting to age myself. And I feel like the plight of me during dental school and after is a little bit different than what dental students and young dentists are dealing with now. So do you feel that? When did that happen for you? You know, too many years ago to admit out loud, but, you know, very fortunately, as you know, I spent a lot of time with young dentists. So I'm sort of living vicariously through young people and um, pretending that I'm young also. And, and maybe it's the the Y chromosome, like I'm sort of a child and um, I'm, I need responsible adults around me to help me. But that makes me really excited for our guest this week, Dr. Kojo. So listen, it is hard for young dentists out there and it's a different kind of hard than it was for you 20 years ago and me for 30 years ago. But um, it's a different kind of difficult and it's I think it's too easy for us to get lost in the, you know, well, I walked both ways uphill and snow barefoot and the whole nine yards story that people tell themselves. So first of all, welcome Dr. Kojo. And we're so excited to have you here. Love to hear a little bit about you and then we'll dive into like the bigger story here. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you guys so much for having me on your podcast. Um, I follow you guys. So I'm like, oh, it's such an honor to be, you know, on your podcast. So thank you so much about that. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I graduated dental school in 2018, so I've been practicing for about six years or so, based in Chicago currently, um, so dental school in Birmingham, and then I moved to Chicago here to do a DPR residency, um, and then I've been practicing ever since, and, you know, as kind of a newer dentist, I've come across a lot of struggles that all dentists face, and I think what you guys mentioned before there are some different struggles that newer dentists are facing. Um, I think like changes with COVID and, you know, it seems like after that time, things are just true, you know, all kinds of crazy, but um, I'm really trying to be more intentional when it comes to trying to um, navigate this career and make it work best for me. And through those experiences that I have, sharing with other dentists, um, newer grads, to not make the same mistakes that I did, you know? So I'm very open, I'm very transparent when it comes to my story. Um, and I also really want dentists overall, not just newer grads, but all dentists of all ages, um, to be honest about what we're, what we're dealing with and what we're struggling with. Um, Cause I feel like we keep that in a little bit too much and then, you know, it comes out in a bad way. And um, I just want us all to be here for each other. That's amazing. You know, I think one of the hardest things that any dentist can do is to be the new person in the practice. You know, their patients are used to seeing the same person and it's not even like they just like you more or whatever. Like they just like it's human nature. People kind of are drawn to what they're familiar with. So if they've been seeing the same dentist for 15, 20, 10, whatever that number is years, they're just kind of used to the that same face. And now you're bringing in somebody else. And now you're hoping that patients are going to embrace that next person the same way that they're embracing you now. I feel like we tend to forget what that was like in the beginning. And it's really hard, right? I mean, now tuition's never been higher. Interest rates are through the roof. The challenges on a new new grad, young dentist, are are real. And you're now faced with trying to get your feet wet in this practice, get comfortable with your new skill, trying to get comfortable with timing of your different procedures, but also you got bills to pay, right? And <laughs> like, how do you, how did you manage that? Because it's not easy. It's not easy. Um, so I'll tell you guys about my first job as a practicing dentist. 
Um, so I finished up with my DPR and I found this job in Chicago and I really do. And I mean, I have nothing bad to say about that, the office or the owner or anything like that. Um, so I went in and I was um, production based. So I was like, OK, you know, production based, you know, um, but it got to a point where there were not enough patients. And so being production based, if you don't see patients, you don't, you know, you don't get paid. Um, I asked for a minimum, like a daily guarantee, just to, you know, even before all this started, I asked for that. The owner was not able to do that. Um, and so my schedule just started to dwindle and dwindle. And if I did see patients, I was seeing profies. Um, so you can imagine how crazy things have been um, or things were um, for me. So, and many of you guys are, I don't know, but I shared my story of how I started driving Lyft, you know, because I had to make ends meet. Here I was fresh out of residency in private office struggling to pay my bills, which honestly, I never thought as a dentist, I would have those issues or those struggles. Um, I was making more in residency than I was, <laughs> you know, as a practicing dentist. So that just kind of gives you um, a viewpoint of, of where things um, were for me. So it was really tough. I really, really struggled with that. I just remember driving lifts and I was just like, I can't believe I am doing this right now. Of course, I'm the I'm the type of person too in the past. I if I need to make ends meet, I will do what I need to do. In college, I would do research studies, like be a test subject for all these different things. So I have no issue um, doing what I need to do. But for me, it was just so like mind-boggling to me like okay I spent all these years in school and here I am mm -hmm. okay you're at the airport you know so it's just it was so crazy to me but um I feel like I needed to kind of go through that in a sense um so I would know in the future what to look for in, in different offices um what to ask for know what my value is too as well um and so it was a small part of my journey, but it was still a really significant part of my journey too, um, because I learned a lot from that experiences and the following experiences that I would have in the future too. Um, but yeah, I just don't think people think that this will be an issue. And I've talked to other dentists that have done the same thing, you know, but no one really no one wants to say, oh, I'm a doctor, but I had to drive Lyft or I had to um, do Uber Eats, you know, to make ends meet. That's just not in our narrative. Uh, mm -hmm. But I want to let people know, hey, there's some ups and downs, you know, that we're all going to face and it comes in different forms and shapes and everything like that. But how do we, how do we navigate through that, right? How do we drive you know our way and um and navigate our way to to something better so that's kind of how my journey started i have so many questions like so <laughs> yeah. uh, and so i guess all right so you're driving you're just driving along now obviously there's people who probably don't even say a word to you and then there's people who want to chat with you and would you tell them I'm a dentist and this is what's happening and I'm, you know, whatever? Because, I mean, it's an interesting story, but I would imagine if you're hearing yourself tell this to somebody and getting whatever their reaction is, that's got to hurt a little bit, I would think. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's funny you say that because as someone who uses Uber and Lyft, you know, sometimes you do get into those conversations with your drivers. That never happened to me, actually. So I never really um, had that conversation. And I'm thinking to myself, even back then, I'm like, okay, if someone asked me, like, well, what, what am I going to say, you know? Yeah. But because um, it's just like, okay, like, why are you doing this? Like, you should be, you know in someone's mouth doing something, not, you know, driving me to my friend's house, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, that actually never happened to me. Um, and I really don't, I think I would have just been honest, honestly, at that point, 
actually now I think I would be honest back then I think I would have been a little bit like um I'm just in healthcare I just work at an office you know just something like to you know just say something but um yeah definitely a really weird time in my life for sure but along those lines it sounds to me like you could have done something else like for example there are some new grads that kill themselves in a DSO, you know, like they like sign up and they like sign up for five days and they're just like cranking it out, turning, but it's, you know, it might not be the career that they're looking for, or maybe it is because obviously some people that just is where they thrive and that's awesome. But I, I, you know, given the struggles of the new grad, somebody, you know, now having loans to pay and that kind of thing, it sounds to me like you were trying to stay true with the way you wanted to practice and in doing so, you kind of did this to kind of get you to that point. Is that a correct assumption? Can't yeah. Um, and, you know, everyone has their own opinions about DSOs and to each their own, right? Um, I personally have never worked for one. I've heard just a lot of things that my other colleagues have gone through. And for me, that's just not what I feel like I want to go through. Again, not saying that every DSO or whatever the case might be is going to be like that. But for me, I heard enough to be like, all right, you know, I want to be in an, an office setting where I feel like things are a little bit more controlled, you know, to, to the best of our abilities, um, where I'm able to really spend the time that I need with my patients that, you know, I don't have to be rushing all over the place, which, you know, sometimes that does happen, but I just, I really did not want to burn myself out this early. Um, so that's why I kind of went this route. I always knew I would get calls, text emails all the time from a bunch of companies. Oh, sign on bonus here, salary here, benefits there. And it sounded great, you know, but it's like, man, do I really want to give up my, I don't want to say happiness, but like, I just don't want to be in a position where I'm just dreading work. And you think about how much time we spend at work on a weekly basis. And of course that varies for everybody, but like the normal 40 hours a week, you know, that's a lot of time. Um, and that's a lot of, that's, that segments a little bit into why I went into locums as well, but that's a different topic. Um, but yeah, I just, I did not want to be in that space. And for me, it was okay to try and figure it out my own way without doing it. Um, another route. So I have a question for you, Pam. How was your introduction to dentistry coming out of programs? Was it, I mean, was it easy? Was it, did it work out? Was it stressful? It was different. So I am a prosthodontist. I would say everybody pretty much knows that. And I, mm -hmm. I, so I started, I tried to stay. It was really stupid. I had this boyfriend, I don't know, in California. And so I decided to live a year in California and get started. Um, worked for an office that was like, okay, but the, the doctor like had me doing profies, which as I was a hygienist. So I was like, cool with it because it was my comfort zone. What was not my comfort zone was telling people, you know, they need to pay for a crown for X amount of dollars or whatever else. Like, so for me, I could like, I liked that, but I, it was not making the bills pay. So there was that. And then I worked for like, like an educator, amazing prosthodontist who the patients would never want to see me because why would they, when they could see him and he sees celebrities and all those things, like, there's no, like, why would you ever want to see me? So while I learned a lot, it kind of also hurt my confidence because I felt like people didn't really want to see me. Boyfriend and I break up, fine, cool. Moved to, and so I moved to Boston and it was an interesting start because I joined the practice there where I was a hygienist first. Okay. And so while I was like welcomed with open arms by the team and the patients were like, oh my gosh, yeah, hi, I remember you, la la la. Um, I was always looked at as like junior, you know, because I was I started there as a hygienist. And then I worked in an office that it was a um, it's not a DSO, but it was a big practice, a big group practice. 
and accepted a lot of plans and the hygienists like me. And so I got busy right away. And not only that, I was looked at as the prosthodontist because the doctors didn't know me. And so all of a sudden there were doctors that graduated in the eighties that were coming to me for questions, which initially I was like, that's so weird. Why? Like, really? But then I was like, no, you need to step up and help them. And that is really kind of where I started to get clinical confidence. So I feel like it almost, no matter what your journey is and how you get started, it can really like, you can like be in this situation that you learn a lot, but not the right fit or great thing for confidence, but not great for the paycheck. You know, like, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of different things, but I really have to commend you because it sounds like you kind of knew what you wanted right away. And you were like, not going to deviate mm-hmm. from that. I can't say I did. I, I always thought that dentists would eventually buy their own practice. So like I needed to get some experience before I did that. That was kind of what I thought. And so, I mean, wow, how self-aware is that? that? I mean, I think that's fantastic. I think it's yeah. amazing. And and I give you credit because for better or worse, good or bad, like most people wouldn't stick to whatever principles we all have um, as our own. Most people wouldn't stick to those at any cost. And um, I mean, it's, you clearly sacrificed yourself because you had a value system that was important to you. So what, where are you, like, where are you now? Like, tell, tell us some of the things that you're doing now. Yes. Um, so right now I have transitioned back to doing locums full time. So um, essentially what I, I try to people are like, okay, so I don't understand what that is. Like, can you break it down? Yeah. So let's say, for example, um, you have an office and the permanent dentist there wants to go on vacation for a week or two that office will reach out to various temp agencies and say, hi, like we need a temp dentist. We don't want to close the doors. We want to keep the office going. Um, Can you get someone to cover for you? Right. Um, So that's where I step in and I go as a temp dentist or a locum dentist and I fill in for the office vacation, sick leave. um, Let's say it's the newer office and they're wanting to, and they're looking for a permanent dentist, but they still want to kind of keep get things started. That's where I come into place. Um, and I say I trans- transition back to it again because I actually started, I've done locums kind of throughout my career, even during um, that time where I was driving Lyft, I kind of dabbled in it a little bit, but there weren't just a lot of opportunities there that work with my schedule. Um And then I started doing it again full time about a year ago, but then I got another opportunity. Um, Long story short, I'm back to it. And (laughs) I'm back to it. I'm doing it full time and I'm really happy with it. Um, There's some reasons why I went into um, it again. I, as we all do, have a special relationship with dentistry, right? As you work throughout the years, you realize dentistry is cool, but I can only work three days a week. Dentistry is cool, but I don't want to see kids. You know, whatever the case might be, it's very unique for everybody. For me, I realize I need a break from dentistry. I'm sorry. I I need a break. And I need a break when I want to take a break. Mm-hmm. Um it's hard to do that in more of a traditional setting. So let's say I'm an associate in an office and I want to take off two, three weeks, maybe a month. That's going to be disruptive to the office. And now they have to scramble and find a, a dentist or like, is the other, are there other dentists within the office that can take on blow? You know, so it's a lot. Um, and so for me, I love the flexibility that I'm, that I have right now. I can choose when I want to work, how much I want to work. Um, I could take breaks when I need to. Um, and I like to be a little bit more in control in a sense. Um, when you're working for someone else that comes with its own um, different things, you know, and, you know, sometimes it might not work for you or whatever the case might be, but 
Um, I really enjoy the flexibility that I have um, with locums and it's so far so it's been good. It's been really good for me. I have so many questions. <laughs> so many. I feel like, well, so you get five dentists in the room, throw a tooth up. I mean, you do it, see, watch on social media and you get like six or seven opinions. You know what I mean? So what is your day like when you show up, there's a schedule for you. What if you're not feeling that treatment plan? Like what if you don't really feel that that carries hit the DEJ or you feel like, no, this really needs a crown and not an MODBL. Like, what does that look like for you? Because I think every morning I would wake up and I would be like, I'd have like a little stress going into my day. I don't know if how I would feel because I, I, I like knowing what's coming. Right. Um, so I'll first say this a lot of times I get this question a lot. What do you do as a temp dentist? How do you manage cases? Cause you're only going to be there for such a short amount of time. So, you know, how does that impact patient care? So if you think about, um, an office, let's say an office, you know, maybe they're doing a lot of big cases and stuff like that. Typically a temp dentist, we're not going to do those kind of bigger cases, right? Um, a lot of the procedures that I do are fillings, exams, hygiene, hygiene checks, um, extractions, um, crowns, things like that. To your question, that is kind of in a sense, the downside of being a temp, because you really don't know what you're going to get yourself into. You don't know the staff. You don't know the assistants. You don't know anything like that. Um, for example, I just finished an assignment last, um, I came home last night. Um, I actually worked in a different state, um, but I came home last night after a week. Uh, the, the doctor took um, vacation, so I came in and helped out. Um, I was able to look at all the treatment, all the patients for the week. And they told me, hey, like, if you feel like you need more time for this, or you feel like you don't wanna, you don't feel comfort do comfortable doing this, we can adjust the schedule as needed, okay? Um, now, let's say I do get into the procedure and I'm like, you planned this, but I don't know about that. At the end of the day, it's your license on the line, you know? And you really have to stand behind your work and what you do. And um, that's what I do. You know, I did change a few things, like a few um, treatment plans that I saw during the week, because I felt like, oh, I feel like this wasn't, not that it wasn't right, but I felt more comfortable doing something else. And I always make sure to write down my justifications. I, wear, I write very detailed notes too, so that when the, um, the, permanent dentist does return, they're able to kind of see what I did as well. But um, yeah, that's like I said, it's just one of those things, like even the first day I was like, oh, like what am I going to get myself into? You know, no, thankfully it was amazing, amazing office. I had, you know, a really, really good time with everyone there. Um, but it's kind of a toss up, you know, it's kind of a toss up and it might not work well for everybody because you just don't want that surprise you know it could be a good surprise it'd be a bad surprise um but yeah that's kind of how uh, my day to day to day goes there so i and i like your i love your outlook you, <laughs> you mentioned earlier like one of the one of the benefits mm -hmm. of what you're doing right now one of the things you really like is like the flexibility and your ability to kind of control your life and your schedule and then you you know you just mentioned that you just you came back from another state. So do you do you like to travel um, lots of different places? Is that part of the you know your plan with all of this? Um, I love to travel. Period. Um, okay. That's just who I am. I like to see new people and experience new things. Um, I'm currently licensed in two states. Um, probably going to be licensed in the third state. Um, and I enjoy that, you know, I like, you know, going somewhere else for the week, you know, and, you know, doing my work there and returning. Um, a lot of people ask me if I want to be flying across the, the country to do jobs and stuff like that. It's not out of the question for me. I'm still 
going through this journey, you know, on my own to see what works best for me. Um, but I love traveling. That's, that's just something that's always been really fun for me to do. Um, and to be able to incorporate that into my career, um, is something that I think is really cool. I was at a CE course last night and I got to run into a friend that I haven't seen for a while. And she, I introduced her to my associate and she was like, how do you find one? Like, I can't find a great dentist. And, you know, she was telling me about some of the trials that she had gone through. I mean, just meeting you for the, just a few minutes here, you're so upbeat and positive and, you know, I, and from what you're describing, it sounds like your dentistry is great and you know really ethical. How do you dodge these offices that probably want to put a ring on it and keep you? Like I would think <laughs> that that's got to happen. Yeah, and that's actually happened quite a few times. Um, and that's another good thing about being a tent doctor. Like you do get to go across and meet a lot of different offices and see how people do things, you know, because each office is different in that way. Um, and I do know people who have done um, locums and they've actually find like their, their home office, you know, through that process. Um, but for me, yes, I've been offered different jobs from places that I've, I've worked at as well. Um, I think it all comes back to what works best for you, right? That's different for everybody. I literally had to sit down. It was probably about a year or so ago. I was, I was really going through it with dentistry. So I sat down and I opened up Google, um, Google Doc, and I typed out, what am I passionate about? What do I like about dentistry? What don't I like about dentistry? what, you know, I wrote everything down so I can literally just see everything in one place. And through the years and through being um, in these different settings and these experiences that I've had, I've realized that I need my flexibility. Um, I was in, uh, I worked at a FQHC for a few years and that was an experience in itself, if we know how FQHCs can be. Um, but one thing I really didn't like for myself is being restricted. You can only get five, six day, five sick days a whole year. You can only have two vacation weeks a whole year. And for me, it's just like, we all know what dentistry entails, right? It is not an easy career, it is not an easy profession. Um, and I really felt kind of like in chains in a, in a sense, like, man, like, what if I'm sick more than five days? You know, you know, what if, you know, X, Y, and Z happens? And I just, I, I really did not like that. Um, and so entering into the space now, for example, next month, I'm taking all next month off to travel to different places. I'm in, you know, I have about five weddings I'm going to and it's my birthday and, you know, taking a birthday trip. So I'm, you know, I'm able to do that and I don't have to ask anybody, Hey, uh, can I, can I uh, take off three weeks or four weeks for this? No, it's all completely um, on my terms in a sense. And I completely forgot the question that you asked. Um, <laughs> So I'm just kind of kind of going on a little bit, but um, yeah, I totally forgot the question that you asked. Oh, you asked like, how do I respond to people giving me job opportunities, right? Yeah. Um, honestly, it's really humbling, but I just kind of have to stick true to what I feel like will work best for me. And in this case right now, it's just doing locums full time and and traveling and being in control of my schedule a little bit more love the people i have i've been with some really really great offices um but i just have to stick true to myself i love your journey <laughs> it's it's it feels very adventurous to me and um which is you know kind of a 
true thing for me. I, I love the, the sense of adventure for it. And I love that you went from this place where it wasn't all working out exactly the way you wanted and probably had more than one moment where you thought like, what have I done? <laughs> Why am I here to this new place where you have um, total control over how you want to practice and, and live your life? It's a really tremendous lesson, not just for young dentists. So those of us who've been in this for a while, like when you wake up mid-career and think, why am I doing this way? Like understand, like we all have options and we have to figure out who we want to be when we grow up at any age. But this is a, you're, you're a great example to, to so many of us, Pam, I, it's, I can't believe we're like almost knocking on the 30 minute door, Pam. So <laughs> holy schmoly. I know. I, so no, I mean, this is just so interesting. And I feel like I didn't feel like I was in shackles until we were having this conversation, but <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's absolutely true. Um, you know, every once in a while things come up and my family asks me like, Oh, you know, whatever, and whatever. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. I can't be, at, you know, I gotta go to work. I gotta work. And it's interesting that you, you know, you're like, no, no, no. That Like I need this balance because you do work and, you know, but it's, it's creating a balance. And so you know, I personally love your Instagram. I, I love that you share your adventures and you kind of tell people what's going on and, you know, the different things that you're doing. Could, would you share where people can find you? Yes, I am on Instagram at I'm a black dentist. Um, that's where I share a lot of my story. Um, I'm very open. Um, I'm very transparent um, and I, with this locum journey to a lot of people have been kind of following along, uh, cause there's a lot of curi curiosity in this space. It's not a new thing, by the way, a lot of people are doing it too. Um, yeah. but, um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram at I am, uh, I'm a black dentist. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so well, much. I yeah, thank you so yeah. much. I look forward to continually following your journey and I'm not going to lie, I'll probably be a little jealous about part of it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys okay, so me much. Okay, too. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> it was an honor. It was truly yeah. an honor. Thank well, the you pleasure was ours. Here. Yeah. And friends, thanks for hanging out with us another week. Pam, the weeks just keep flying by. Somehow we're still getting younger though, I think. So it's okay. But till next time. Friends, great seeing you. Thanks for stopping by. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching or listening to the show this week. And thanks to our guests and sponsors on this episode. Please check out our social media at Dr. Pamela underscore Maragliano and at Dental Economics Official. Or you can check me out at Ignite DDS or at Dr. David Rice. And go to dentaleconomics.com to receive dental economics. You can choose to receive DE in print or digitally, and you can also get the details of our Principles of Practice Management Conference on our website. If you have topics or guests or anything you'd like to talk about on the show, send us an email to dentistryunmaskedpodcast at gmail.com, and we will do our very best to make it happen. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.